chosen ones, empaths, is very frequent for a narcissist after a discard to clutch to your personal belongings. There may be something, it could be sentimental to you. It could be sentimental, like it is really important to you. It might just be some type of belonging of yours. But oftentimes they go for something that's very sentimental to you. Something very important to you. Something very personal. And after a discard, you know, they. I believe they do this to confuse you as well. Because when we're in the fog... Sorry, when we're in the fog of the narcissist and we've still got our fuzzy love goggles on, we're in this fog and they're they're saying they want to break up or whatever, right? They they, want to end the relationship, right? They want to discard you. But then you've got them holding on to stuff That's very personal to you. It might not be sentimental value. But it might be something very personal. It could be a jacket. It could be some clothes. It could be anything. It could. It's something. Something of yours. It's yours. It's not theirs. It's yours. And they seem to clutch to these personal belongings. And I know why they do it. It's very sadistic why they do it. Um... If you look at a psychopath, no, not a psychopath, sorry, a serial killer. A serial killer often collects trinkets of their murder victims. They might take a necklace, a ring, a finger. They'll take something of the victim to remind them so they can gratify themselves of the crime they've done previously. And I believe fundamentally that this trinket collecting of the narcissist, because that's exactly what it is. It's a personal item to you, but it's a trinket to the narcissist. Is basically functioning along those same sort of tendencies. I know it's not as extreme as a murder, but they, they like to collect trinkets of yours and they'll store them in a place with a lo- amongst all their other trinkets from all their other victims and it's there to remind them of you and it's also there to confuse you because when you're as i said when you're in the fog and you have a narcissist holding to your items and they're not giving them back you might have asked for them back they might have sent some of your stuff back but then they've held on to some of it you're thinking in your head this person's not serious. They they don't want to break up. Like that's the message it sent to me, because I had a person. I had a, a very sentimental ashtray. Um, that was. I don't have much of my mum's since she passed away. But I had an ashtray and I had it at the, when I was with the narcissist at the flat, and we used to use it. And after the discard, they sent my stuff back, but they kept. Um, if I can remember rightly, they kept, uh, the ashtray, my mother's ashtray. They kept some really nice clothes of mine that they didn't like me wearing because, you know, I remember one time, like, they didn't like me wearing these clothes, um, not being vain or anything, but they they suited me. The clothes were nice. They were nice. They were nice jeans. They they they, they were really nice. They kept that, uh, a couple of pairs of jeans actually, and they also kept a CD. And on the CD there was this song I used to listen to, and it's about um a guy being so happy with his girlfriend cooking for him, and he's enjoying life and. He's so blessed to have this woman in his life. And the song goes on, the song goes on, um, saying how great it is about this relationship. And then at the end of the song, he wakes up and it was a dream. So the narcissist kept that CD from me. Um, 
personally I believe because that song was on there and they didn't want they they knew I'd listen to that song and get a bit of closure from the from the relationship because it was just a fantasy what they were offering me you know and and this this song told the whole story of what it exactly was and I used to listen to that song quite frequently but they kept that cd of mine but the main thing that I wanted back was 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 the ashtray and um they actually had to I had to bring it up in court I was saying look can I just have my ashtray back so the judge had to make an order for them to return the ashtray and they had to return the ashtray. So I kind of got the last laugh in the end. But what they were ultimately trying to do was destroy the memory of my mother. It's very sick what they were trying to do. They were just trying to destroy the memory of my mother and make me associate that ashtray with them. And I don't associate the ashtray with them. I still associate it with my mother. So they haven't, they haven't scarred me in that way. But that ultimately was their aim. Or they were trying to keep it there to lure me out, right? So I so I turn up at their house one day demanding for the ashtray. You know, they were they were doing it to lure me out. Um another thing they can do. Sorry, I didn't mention. I read through the comments. This was a subscriber's request video. I normally say that at the beginning. A subscriber, shout out to you. I hope you're watching. I hope you're listening. And I hope I give you the justice in this video that you deserve. Um, they made a comment saying about these specific topics. So this is what brought the, the video idea to mind. So thank you for the video idea. And I hope what I, what I cover in this video will, will give you some closure. Um basically them clutching to your belongings is a trinket they want to keep it there it will remind them of you you're one of their victims and they want it as a trinket uh, another thing they do is they might leave something at your house so if they clear all their stuff out of your house they'll leave something behind and come on, man, we, we, we know what that's all about. Why are they leaving something behind? It's because they're already pre premeditating, returning at a later date to collect it. Or they're leaving it for you to have a reminder of them. It's very weird, but it's planned. They've done this. They've planned it. They want you to remember them. And they're leaving this this, this item behind for you to to remember them and that reminds me actually um the narcissist when they packed they sent my belongings back to my dad's house um they put items of their own clothing in there they put items like a t-shirt i think it was um a pair of jeans that wasn't mine um trying to make me think it's another male's um they basically put this in the in the bag uh to i don't know what it wasn't enough for me to, it wasn't enough for me to say oh hold on here you go here to return it but they done it to mess with my head they also put um uh, birthday cards birthday cards they sent me with pictures that they created with pictures of us on the front inside inside the bag and they wrote in the card not not at the time of the birthday card they wrote this after before they sent their belongings back and they wrote in the card whether we're near or far you are always in my heart and i swear like i was so in the fog this really confused me they had the ashtray they had the cloves they wrote in the card whether we're near or far you're always in my heart um, they wrote that additional in an, in in another pen. Like the the card was a one that you make on Moonpig, one of these websites. Like it wasn't a written card; it was one you make on one of these websites. Like and you put pictures on it and stuff. And they wrote in a pen, whether you're near or far, you are always in my heart. And I kept those cards, and I used to look at them, and I used to look at the pictures of us on the front, and it used to make me sad. You know, and they, they purposely done that to really mess with my head. I, I kept them for a long time till I had a 
till I think I went through the dark night of the soul um, and I tore them up. Um, I don't know too much about the dark night of the soul, but it was this time in my life where I went through, I went through something um, and I just tore it up and I got rid of all the belongings of theirs and I, I tore everything up and I binned it. But I did keep it for a while and I used to look at it. It used to be in my wardrobe and I used to look at it and I'd see the pictures of us like happy on the front of it and it, yeah, it used to tear me up, man. It used to tear me up. Sorry, I was such a, I feel like a soft little prick. <laughs> if that, I just feel like an idiot. But I'm being open and honest with you guys. Like, only I have to be open. I have to be transparent. I have to be honest. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of me making these videos? But back to the topic at hand, you know, they, they, they're clutching at your stuff. If they've got your stuff, you know, personally, what I would advise you to do, if it's enough, if it's enough items, no, do you know what? If it's whatever it is that you want back, I, I don't advise you to go around there off your own accord because these lot can start putting fake allegations on you that you raped them or you... Or you assaulted them, or you, or you done something, you smashed their windows, or whatever. You can never like put anything past a narcissist. Do not go around there by yourself. Do not even bother going around there with someone. Contact the police and say I am dealing with someone who is highly manipulative, and I'm in fear of them putting fake allegations on me. I need my belongings back. Can someone escort me round to the premises to get my stuff? Unless you have a police escort, do not go round to the house. Do not try and attempt to get your stuff back. Make sure you have a police escort. Uh, I'm sure the police will do it because um, it's a domestic case. Um, you need to tell them, look, I'm in fear of my reputation. You know, I can't go around there. I'm not going around there. I need someone to escort me. If they suggest a friend or family, maybe you're going to have to go for second best and take a friend or family member around there. But then even them as a witness, it's going to be, it's not, it's a friend. So like, it's not like um, an unbiased witness. They're just going to say that your, your friend was an associate and they were part of the crime if, if the narcissist decides to start lumping fake allegations on you and that and and to be honest with you that was the the motive behind my narcissist i believe keeping them as much as they wanted them as trinkets they wanted to keep that there to lure me out and i i didn't go around there to get it i didn't go around there to get it i wrote emails instead um i didn't go around there to get the the ashtray but you know it confused me when they when they held on to that i thought i thought they were gonna break it i didn't know if they were gonna break it i didn't know if they were gonna i didn't know at the time but it's a real sick sick plot to try and ruin the memory of my mother that i have through the ashtray and try and make it about them it's a very selfish action. It's it's not something I'll do to my own enemy. You know, if my own enemy had some possession that was close to them, to the, of their dead parent, I wouldn't hold it away from them or try and break it or, you know, stop them from having it. You know, I wouldn't do that to my worst enemy. I'd say, take your belongings and I don't want to see you, you know. <laughs> this is the thing that confused me. It really confused me. But you've got to understand that they ultimately they want personal belongings of yours to add to their trophy cabinet. They want to add them to their trophy cabinet. And these will be trinkets that they will look at every now and then. To remind them of you, they'll gratify themselves over them, they'll feel satisfied over them. It's very sick, it's very twisted, but this is what they do.
they will have them there and they will look at them and they'll think, look what, I, look what I've got. And they'll actually feel gratified. They'll feel gratified over having that belonging. It's very simple with them leaving stuff at your house. It's just, it's just patently obvious. They're waiting for a further date for them to come and return them. What I would advise to do in that situation, I probably should have said this earlier, but what I would advise to do in that situation, if you're still on speaking terms, um, is post it to them. If it's, if it's able to be posted. Um, yeah, you can post anything, even if it's a TV. Um, as long as you pack it correctly with bubble wrap and make sure it doesn't break and this and that. Maybe maybe make sure there's some insurance on the package if you're sending it so they can't lie and say it got lost. I'd advise posting it to them. Tell them I'm going to post it to you. What address do you want me to post this to you at? That will stop them coming back around to your house. Don't give them the satisfaction of coming back around to your house to collect it. Don't give them the satisfaction of that. Literally, post it to them. Ah, uh, I nearly forgot. The narcissist planned this whole thing with me me and her because before I was at her house, she had a necklace, which was her granddad's, a crucifix. And we were wasn't we was a bit short of money and stuff, and she asked me to pawn this necklace in my name. I'd never done it before, didn't really even want to do it. And to be honest, we wasn't that short of money. We had money, but she 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 was adamant that she wanted me to pawn this, to pawn this necklace. So I pawned this necklace, and then all of this drama happened with the smear campaign, the police, the courts, all of that. And then I got a letter through my post saying, "Uh, you need to come to the what are they called, man, the pawn shop." You need to come to the pawn shop and pay the money, otherwise we're going to sell it. In other words, it wasn't like we're going to pawn it, otherwise we're going to sell it. It was in other words, in a formal letter, like, to me. And obviously, me being a caring person, I didn't want her to lose the necklace, which was her granddad's. So at the time when she had my ashtray and she had... Uh, my jeans and the CD and all of that. I had her necklace. And when the police arrested me. Um, I brought the necklace with me. And I said look this is her necklace. Can you give her this necklace? They were saying. And then when I got released from the police station. They gave it back to me. And I said no. This is not mine. You've done all this stuff with saying I've got arrested because of her and stuff. This is her necklace. Can you can you return it to her? And they returned it to her. That's what I done. I didn't even see that's where you just from like I've just remi like reminded myself as I'm telling the story they actually left something with me. You see? They were trying to leave something of theirs with me. So it wasn't just a t-shirt that they packed in the bag. They actually tried to leave a very sentimental of their dead grandfather's necklace um, that was a gift to her with me. Um, and if I was an evil person, a horrible person, yeah, I think I was even out of work at the time because I was too stressed. I didn't even have the money. I had to go and pay like £200 to go get the necklace out. And I did. I did. I didn't want it to get lost. I didn't want it to get sold. I didn't want it, them to lose it, you know. And I and I done that off my own accord. And I, and I don't regret doing it neither because, you know, that's a gift from my granddad. And still to this day, that's a gift from my granddad. And I wouldn't want to take that away from her as much as I dislike the person, as much as she's like my worst enemy now. I wouldn't want to stop her having access to that necklace. But she was willing willy-nilly gonna give it up and let me just have it to try and mess up my head like it meant more to her for me to have it to mess up my head 
than it did for her to have something that should be very sentimental to her. But I gave that to the police, gave them back to her, but she still didn't re return the ashtray. She held on to that for months after. It took months for me to get that back. And I finally got it back and I've got it in my flat now. But it doesn't remind me of her, you know, but not nah, this is just this is just what narcissists do. They um they clutch to your personal belongings. <laughs> they leave stuff with you. It's just part and part of how they how they operate, you know. It's just part and part of how they operate. Very delusional beings, very weird beings. Um I wouldn't worry too much about it, but just make sure just remember what I said about the the police escort. If you need to get your belongings back, try and get a police escort. Try your utmost to get a police escort. Because I don't want none of you lot going around to the property and then getting some fake allegations. I've seen some crazy videos online of women hitting themselves. Not just women, men will do this too. But like I've seen a video of a, I mentioned it earlier in my video earlier, of a woman beating herself up in the lift and then trying to file uh abuse reports on her husband but luckily there was cameras in the lift and it, it got found out to be false you know and the thing is is like when people file fake allegations it's like there's not even a punishment for these fake allegations i don't know why they don't they don't get punished like they should do you know <sighs> but do do what you can to get your stuff back. Remember, it's not they're holding it because they love you. They're not holding it because they want to be back with you. They're holding it to F with your head. They're trying to screw up your head. That's ultimately why they're trying to do it. They're not holding it because they love you. They're not holding it because they want to be back with you. Yeah, they might even want to be back with you, but they're not doing it for that reason. They're not doing it for that reason. They're doing it to screw up your head. And they want drama. That's all they want is drama. That's what these individuals want. They want drama, drama, drama. That's what they want. So if you've got a narcissist in your life clutching to your personal belongings, um, get the police escort. It's the best advice I can say. Police escort. You know, they'll, they'll be pissed. They'll be pissed. If you turn up with some officers, you're not snitching them up or nothing. This is not no snitching thing or nothing like that. If you can get some police officers to turn up at the property and you go in and get your stuff calm, coll collectively, nonchalant, get your stuff, walk outside, bang, on your way. They'll be pissed. They'll be so pissed. Because they, 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 they want you to come around and have an argument and then... Start screaming and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, They're weirdos. So avoid get avoid even attempting to get your stuff back. Avoid even attempting to get your stuff back until you have a police escort or at, at least an escort by a family member or something like that. Or a family member go there and collect it for you, you know. Um, but I don't want to get your family members in trouble because the narcissist is capable of anything. The narcissist is capable of filing fake allegations on anyone and anyone. You know, they don't care. If it's a way to hurt you, if it's a way to mess you up, they will do it. That's what I'm saying. They will do it. So if you're at home now and you're looking at their belongings post it to them get it gone you need that out of your you need that out of your space some negative energy orbiting around that their belongings man you need them gone from your vicinity without a doubt you need them gone like you need them gone 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 swear to god can't have their their stuff lingering around your place it's like crazy but um Um, it is, uh, really hard when you're, when you're going through this and you, and you don't know what, what's really going on. It is really hard going through this when 
when you're looking at this person as if they're your soulmate, you love them, you've had a breakup, and you don't really know about this narcissistic stuff. So I'll be, uh, I hope this um, video reaches you, the subscriber that commented, and it helps you in the way that I anticipate it helps you. I aimed, my intentions are for it to help you. Um, but just don't get confused with any, uh, I can't stop reiterating this, but don't get confused with whether they've left belongings or they're holding your belongings. Don't confuse that with love. Because that was my mistake. I confused it like they were still interested and stuff like that. And they, they were still interested. But it's not what they're actually doing it for. It's not their motive for the reason for holding the belongings or leaving you with belongings. They're trying to confuse you. They're trying to scar your mind. And for closure, your closure is going to come from getting your belongings back or, or getting rid of their belongings out of your house. Or if or if it's both. Because you did put in the comment. Both scenarios. If you have something of theirs. And they have something of yours. The exchange needs to be made. The exchange has to happen. Police escort. Post it. That's all I can say. So thank you for watching today. Please press the like and the subscribe button. If you'd like to donate to the channel, you can find the link in the description box. And if you'd like a one-to-one -one session with myself, you can also find the link in the description box. Currently, I've got a secondary channel, the spiritual channel. So anyway, I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.